Um, I, I think there are seven components of a good exercise program for someone with Parkinson's. First and foremost, any exercise that you're doing, whether it's boxing, Tai Chi, running, stretching, yoga, um, any exercise that you choose can be beneficial, but it has to have seven components in it. So the very first component is anything you're doing has to be big, powerful movements. And I mentioned before that I'm a Parkinson's Wellness Recovery Certified Therapist, a power certified therapist. Um, that program is based out of Arizona. A woman named Becky Farley is a physical therapist. She established that Parkinson's specific program um, with the help of some of her coworkers. And it's a wonderful system um, that helps Parkinson's um, symptoms specifically and what we're really learning through the research is that big powerful movements help to reactivate the Parkinson's brain to move in a more normalized fashion so the example that I often give people is with Parkinson's your brain sends a message to your body my brain tells my arms to go out this far my arms because I don't have Parkinson's match where I want them to go Okay. Yeah. If you have Parkinson's and you're telling your brain or you're telling your body to go this far, what your body hears, and this is very simplified, is this. So I think as a Parkinson's person, I think I'm out here, sure. but I'm actually here. And so a lot of the strategies of the big, powerful movements have to exaggerate your movement. So as a Parkinson's person, you think you're way, way, way out there, but really now you're normal. You come to this normal spot. So number one is big, powerful movements. Number two is any exercise program you're doing has to be tailored to you. Um, it has to be uh, for example, if your main complaint is rigidity, like I know you were struggling with from the very beginning, rigidity in your trunk, for example, your core, um, things that help uh, relieve that a bit as far as exercise go are rotational movements. So spinal flexibility, um, some rotational through the core can help you address your specific symptoms. Now for someone who um, doesn't have rigidity but wants to work on um, freezing, for example, um, you know, that, that tailors more to weight shifting and stepping. And so your program has to focus on your specific symptoms because if it's not focused on your symptoms, you're not getting the most benefit. So one, big powerful movements. Two, tailored to your symptoms. Number three, and this answers your question about intensity, is it has to be physically challenging. And one of my favorite uh, sayings is, if it's not challenging you, it ain't changing you. Okay. And that is so true. And um, there's a physical therapist at the Cleveland Clinic that I shadowed for a day. And um, I just remember her telling me, Sarah, you have to push these people. Because I was sitting in the corner watching her work with some of her Parkinson's patients. I was watching her take people who were freezing, who were stuck to the floor, and asking them to run across the room by themselves around cones to a mat and turn around and run back. And of course I'm terrified of people to fall, but you know, and I was really anxious about this and she looked at me and she said, you can't get anywhere with people unless you push them hard. And I've really taken that to heart. And so if it's not challenging you, it's not changing your brain. That's just the way our brains are wired. Um, physiologically and historically, if you think about where we started, our brains only change if they have a reason to change. So if you're comfortable sitting on a bike, you're not out of breath, it's not um, you know, raising your heart rate or difficult at all, your brain already knows how to do that, right? So it's not gonna change. Um, and so I believe highly in intense exercise and I never make anyone go through painful movements. Um, if it's hard, that's okay. If it hurts, then we need to find something different. So there's a difference in painfully intense and difficult intensity. And um, so physically challenging is incredibly important. And then it has to be mentally. The fourth one is mentally challenging. Um, Oftentimes something that's lost with Parkinson's is the ability to multitask. So basic example is walk and chew gum. 
specific to Parkinson's is walk through a crowded grocery store while scanning the environment for your groceries. You're walking and you have to scan. On top of that, the grocery store is extra challenging because there are people around you, it's noisy, you're managing a cart, um, you know, kids are running in front of you, there's so much for you to manage and the Parkinson's brain at a certain point has trouble focusing on more than one thing at once. This is where freezing can be a huge component. And I know you've spoken to having trouble crossing the street whenever you were really struggling. Well, think about what has to go into crossing a street. You have to make sure that you have enough time. You have to scan the road for oncoming cars that could flatten you. You have to um, quickly change um, surfaces, go from a curb to the road to a curb again, um, on top of you know the stress of getting to where you want to be, and et cetera, et cetera. So mentally challenging exercise where you're multitasking, you have to um, exercise and count backwards would be a very simple example. Or um, carry something, scan the environment, and tell, you know, call out what you see. Um, you know, it can reach a million different combinations, but if it's not mentally challenging, if you don't have to focus on what you're doing and be mindful and present of your exercise, then it's too easy and it's not going to change you. So those are the first four. The three more are fun, social and accountable. So every program you're on, you have to be enjoying in some way. Uh, if you're not enjoying it, uh, really you're wasting your time and there's something out there that everyone enjoys. You just have to figure out what it is. And a social environment for exercise, whether it's one-on-one -on -one with a trainer or a physical therapist or um, a workout buddy, you know, find a Parkinson's workout buddy. Um, that social aspect is so important in Parkinson's. And um, this is where I love, there's a local nonprofit that I uh, work really closely with called Power for Parkinson's. And two wonderful women started it. Their fathers um, had and have Parkinson's. Uh, free exercise classes for the whole community for people to come yeah. and their caregivers too and everyone can join together in the social environment and you know it's people see amazing results because they're moving more but also coming into this environment where they see other people working hard too and um, they feel that camaraderie we're social beings and we need that component so, and finally that adds the accountability piece too you need someone to keep you accountable because as I've heard almost 100% of my clientele say, it's hard to motivate yourself, you know, but if you have someone that you are answering to, that you know is just even thinking about you, um, that kind of takes people from that apathy stage to just kicking you over the hump of saying, somebody's gonna hold me accountable to this, even if it's two stretches. Um, I know that the next time I see Sarah, for example, she's gonna ask me, did I do those things? And nobody, if I've learned anything about the Parkinson's community, it is full of people who want to do their best and um, who are kind of perfectionists, you know, to some degree. So um, we really utilize that and say, I'm holding you accountable. And, you know, whether it's one on one, like I said, or a group environment, you need that accountability piece too. So I gave you a long answer to the intensity question because I think there are lots of things that are important to an exercise program. And those are it, those are my seven. I actually have to add number eight, okay, because I give this talk at our local groups and I've had, um, a friend named George who actually you met George. I did. You met George. Every time I give this talk, this, um, you know, seven step talk, George raises his hand and he says, there's a number eight. And he says, you have to leave your ego at the door. And, um, you know, I think that's a really powerful message too, is because people, you have to get out of your comfort zone if you're going to change your brain, whether it's exercise, diet, whatever it is, you have to get uncomfortable. And, um, you know, so I have to throw in number eight. You have to leave your ego at the door. So that's a shout out to you, George. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. That was